Hey there. Okay, following the previous episode, we're going to talk about mixing today. So let's get right into it. Mixing. Mixing. So we have a bunch of tracks, and now we have to decide what goes where, where to put things so that they match, what kind of sound do we want. Um, so the bass sounds, we have it. But what I found happened is as I'm mixing, I'm noticing things that don't match, that don't fit, that don't go well together. And then I have to make decisions where in a standard mixing process, I would re-record things. But because I'm just super lazy and I want to get that damn track out, I decided to, to use plugins to kind of change things around a little bit. Um, let's go from the bottom to the top. Let's go first with the drums. The drums is really, really standard. Uh, addictive drums, I did change the snare because I thought the snare was too light. It was like popping out too much, so I changed the snare instead of EQing it. It's a better sound, I think. Um, and what I decided to do, generally speaking, in terms of mixing, I decided to use some of these automated, automated plugins that actually do most of the compressing and EQing for you. It's very dangerous because you don't have control over what happens, but you just have control over the sound. You can say, I like it, I don't like it, I accept it, I don't, I, I don't accept it. And uh, Isotope has such a tool, it's called Neutron Elements. Here it comes. You can hear, now that's not free. I got the whole thing packaged for like $29, I think. So it's really not that bad. So here you see, there's a chain of an equalizer, an exciter that's not on, and a compressor. So actually I could remove that one. Equalizer, compressor, those are the two most used plugins ever, probably. I like it's like probably in all, on every tack on every song you've ever listened to it's probably an, equal, an equalizer and a compressor um the you see there's a bit of boost uh, now that's for the uh drums and i'm uh, that was really interesting it decided to boost the the low end here and that's for the kick drum and it's true that it pops out a little bit more with the plug-in on uh, a few dips here probably for uh bad resonances and a little bit of there was a bit um the plug-in the addictive drum plugins can give drums that are very light, very bright, and I decided to, to cut a little bit of that. Um, so, and a compressor with very, very, um, uh, it's slight compression. So it just, sh it's shaving off the peaks and making everything uh, a little bit more um, even, let's say, the drum uh, um, performance. Um, and especially on uh, the hi-hats, and uh, because the rest I hit pretty pretty um, regularly, it's uh, I have a fairly good sound on, on my drums. Um, so you see here in terms of drums, nothing too drastic. And of course, you need some uh, reverb. And I said I, I decided to use a a standard that's studio drums. It's got a little bit of air, a little bit of a. Uh, it gives you you hear it um, in the pre-chorus. Drink is just to numb me. You can hear the drums going and it goes that's the reverb coming in. Otherwise, what happens is if you don't put any reverb on it, the, the drum's gonna be in your face and everything else is gonna be like in the back, and it's really not it's really not nice from a um, a sound perspective. So drums, nothing drastic. Let's go to the um, bass. So bass, we've got Amplitube with a very standard amp. Uh, it's actually called Solid State Bass Preamp. The, the bass preamp is, is, is very clean, very nice. Um, the bass, I did use another plugin, which is TDR Nova. And it's a, it's a compressor EQ plugin. So what you can see here in yellow, that's the EQ curve. So I'm, cut, I'm cutting a lot of things, but making it kind of like musical because the slope is not very vertical because you only hear that it cuts certain frequencies. It's pretty ugly. I'm cutting the highs because there's nothing there besides basically noise. Uh, two little boosts at frequencies that are very typical for bass, like below 200 hertz, uh, because that's where the body of the bass is. And I, I have a lot of notes where the bass goes fairly, uh, fairly deep. Uh, let me find. Crying all the time. And um, so those deserve a little bit like a bit um, more more presence. 
and then we have the just like 800k and that's where you get a bit more of the i don't want to say the high end but kind of more of the of the fret noises of the of the bass guitar and uh, and there's a bit of compression and that's the blue line here um we're compressing here um with you see the ratios of compression that are not really high we have three for the bottom because you really want that bottom to come in pretty much all the time, every time, because it's that's what the bass is for. And a slight, slight slider, lighter compression for the, the the higher band. That's why I like Nova because you can do both at the same time in the same plugin. Um, and then again, Neutron Elements. And here we do have an exciter to give it a bit more uh, sparkle. Um, some corrections here. That I think is my fret noises and uh, compression. And bass is the first um, instrument I'm sending to my group reverb. And you can see I'm sending everything. It's, uh, it's the bass sound. You see why I, I, I tell you that. So that is the bass. Now, if we want to go, uh, what I could do actually, let me do that. Crying all the time. Why are you running? Can you hear the bass? Why are you screaming? You see how it moves all over the place? You see now it's more focused? Don't be scared of me. The drink now the drums is just to numb me. You see how they're in your face? Blows are just to numb you. And now they're back. Can't you? All right, now we go to the guitars now. Why is there four guitar tracks? The first reason why is I have now a clean guitar sound, um, which uh, I'll leave clean. All the time. Why are you running? Why are you screaming? And that's for the first verse, the first pre-chorus. And uh, then I added these, these, these babies here. I gave you all my heart. Now, I played those parts twice. I didn't copy them and do some random crap on it because I don't think that works too well. I really played them twice. So it gives this nice wide sound because I panned left and right. Uh, and it's, it's got distortion on it. So um, you see my, my clean guitar, it only has neutral elements on it. And basically there's an equalizer. Again, a few corrections, a huge dip at, uh, what is this band here? 7,000 hertz, don't ask me why. Now that's the thing about Neutron is that it's nice, but you don't really know why it's doing what it, what it, what it does. You're just listening and all right, that sounds good. I'll accept whatever it tells me. Uh, compression, you see the ratio is a bit higher. So it gives a nice little, uh, is, the guitars on this, on this song are like almost like a pad. Something that's very, very uh, equal. And an exciter that works a little bit in the background to make the guitars sparklier. Um, now on the, on the distorted guitars, I have guitar rig and we have a nice little, um, cabinet with some drive. Actually, let me, um, I gave you all my heart, scared of emptiness, not the same sound, scared right? Scared of loneliness. So plugins, magic. And then of course, on the groove track, that's where I actually can, uh, that's why I group them so I can really mix them both together. I have a neutral element and it's got pretty much the same thing as the, uh, as the other. You see here the high pass where we don't want any of the low end of the guitar because we want to leave room for the bass. And the same dip at whatever, seven, what is it? Yeah, 6,000 6, 6, Hertz. And of course, we are sending both the clean and the other one 
to the reverb. Now, as you can see here, I'm not sending all of the sound to the reverb, which means the reverb has less to work with. So it's a bit tamer. It's a bit lighter, the reverb for the guitars, because they were too airy and they were taking too much space. So when the guitars take too much space, you can actually make them take less space by reducing the reverb that's on them. So that's for the, uh, the reverbs. Now, keyboards. I struggled with the keys. They could not find a sound that complemented the vocals. Let me mute the guitars. A woman with love and respect. Okay, you notice the reverb. So I decided to give the keys their own reverb. So what do we have on there? We have sample tank and here I decided to, oof, what is that voice? Uh, what is that thing? The deep water pad light. I want to use an organ, like a, a real like organ, but the problem with the organ, it's very light. It did not cut through because when you think about it, that's kind of, I mean, that's house or techno keys they're not rock or pop keys well i don't care i think the sound works well with the voice a woman with love and respect <laughs> it's funny when i hear this now i think i'm gonna make a remix that's a house remix or something just because of that sound eh, we'll see whatever if it comes if it comes uh, alive it will so i have sample tank and then i have neutron and here we cut a lot of low end, a little bit of boost here in uh, whatever that is, 2000 Hertz. Uh, compressor, super compressed because those are pads and you want to say that we want to have them really, really even. It's not a piano performance where you need some dynamics. Here, when the keys come in, you need to hear them. What else do we have? And then we have ozone, uh, ozone Imager. Now, what it does is it widens the keyboard so. a woman with love and respect that's very cool a woman because then that. what it does is okay that's now that's a that's a trap so you have to be really careful a lot of noob mixers like me when things are colliding what do you do you spread in a spectrum so you say I'm gonna put my keys like like this, my voice in the middle, my guitars, and my bass and my and my drums on the bottom, and I'll be fine, right? The problem is most people, a lot of people, listen to that in their car or with an earbud, just one. Um, and what that happens, what they actually see this button here, this is the mono stereo, and that is your friend. Now that's a trick that not a lot of people know because a lot of, a lot of pros don't say it because it's, it's, it's really, and I'm, it's not like I invited it, I, I invented it or, or anything. It's just, it's such a useful trick when you want to check your mix, because you're going to fiddle around with left and right and, and panning and stuff, but you got to check that in mono, it actually sounds, sounds fine. So if we take the whole thing. is true is that in mono the guitars disappear a little bit behind the keys and that's normal that's called the masking effect because our ears can only hear one sound at a certain frequency it cannot distinguish sounds behind it's just that that's 2000 hertz that's what i hear and it's going to be the keyboard or it's going to be whatever's louder and the keys are louder there but it's it's okay because what the guitars give is a, is a, is a texture Okay, let's put that in mono. So when I put the guitars back in, you saw that the sound, even though it's in the middle, actually sounded bigger because it, the guitars were giving a texture behind the keys. 
Um, so that was the keys. The piano is sample tank as well. And I think that's one of the pianos. I don't remember which one. The Berlin Grand Piano Sonata. It's very... It's, it's dark and it's very soft. And I love that. Um, because the ending of the song... It's it's a bit unfinished. It's a bit like, okay, what's going to happen now? She left. She's alive, but, you know, it's not going to be a piece of, you know, a piece of cake, how they say in my family, a piece of cake. So the piano had to be soft and a bit dark. So that's why I chose that one. And there's a bit of neutral element again. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, so here, just high pass, just low pass. I mean, high pass. Or low cut and a very, very very light eq the sound was was really uh, nice the way it was and piano now here i decided to go with the dream hall so they go long tail uh, because i thought the piano was it was a nice touch at the end to to give this kind of like airy uh, reverb we're going to the vocals so here on the backing vocals nothing much to be honest a lot of a lot of compression because again for backing vocals you want them to be there when you need them uh, very at, at very um, a, um, 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 standard um, regular level. The equalizer is very drastic. Now you would never do that. Well, almost never do that on the, on the main vocal. I'm cutting a lot because here is where the main vocals are. So you want to let you leave room for that when both sing at the same time, like uh, here, for example. So let me just mute these guys. The drink is just to numb you. The blows are just to numb me. So by carving out a little bit of that sound here and a lot of uh, low frequencies, you can actually make it happen like that. Then the vocals. So first thing I did for the vocals, I used the... Uh, the uh, ERA for voice leveler. That's a compressor. And what I did is uh, I used the, uh, the tight mode, which is um, which leaves the, uh, the transients intact. And um, I put breath control, but I had to kind of really be drastic in terms of cutting the, 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 the breath, the, uh, the air intake and so on. So this is kind of to level the sound. After that neutron, you see more air, you know, it's basically, you know, ab above 2,500 Hertz, a little cut here. Not sure why compressor first, well, actually you could have, you, you could think of putting the compressor after the equalizer in that case, but, and an exciter to make the voice sparkler. Exciters usually add harmonics to the sound to make them richer and lighter. And then a delay. Now, why did I do a delay? The delay is, is, is light. I mean, there's not, of, uh, there's not a lot of, of um, it's, it's very short. You see here, 30 milliseconds, very little feedback. So it's not one of those huge delays. A delay is, is like an echo and uh, it can act like an echo. And when it's below 25 to 30 milliseconds, you think it, it's like a reverberation of a wall. So it gives a sense of space. So by adding a delay, I was able to push the vocals a little back into the mix. I'm not completely satisfied with the result, to be honest. There's some parts of the song where the vocals jump out a little bit too much. Uh, so I did the, the, um, the delay. And then I used a, a, a this reverb by Tal. I couldn't find anything in, in Raum that I liked, so I used Tal with uh, very little diffusion. And you see here the reverb is like 29% of the total intensity of the reverb. So a very light reverb on the vocals. Let me just uh, um, demonstrate. Why are you screaming? That's without nothing. You were supposed to love me. You see, it's pretty even, but there's no character. Of me. That's the delay. Don't be scared of me. You hear how you think you're Drink in a room? Is just to numb me. Now, when you listen to this, the blows are just to numb you. 
It's not bad, but it doesn't sound good. The mistake that you don't do is make a good sounding vocal with no context. Never do that. Because when you do that and then you put back into context, you have a lot of other instruments that are going to conflict with the vocals. Which, and and, and if, you, if you craft like a super vocal sound with no context, it's just not going to work. So if I unmute uh, these guys. Why are you screaming? You see how it, they're in your face? You were supposed to love me. I feel you scared of me. More into the mix. Don't be scared of me. And it gives a little more character, and I really liked that aspect of the voice, a bit darker. You can make your, your reverb dark, by the way. You see here, low cut, high cut. So you can set, you can tell your reverb, I want to keep the part of the reverb that's above this frequency or below that frequency to make, uh, for example, a very airy reverb, you would keep the high end of the, the, the high frequencies of the reverb. Uh, to make a darker reverb, you would obviously cut the high end and only keep the low end. So that's for the main tracks. Then on the master bus here on the left, you have Ozone 9 Elements. That's the master suite, uh, mastering suite. Now, I know it's not mastering, but it gives a, its beginning of mastering for people like me who don't know what the hell they're doing. And you see here, it cuts a little bit in the mids, a bit more lows. I mean, uh, um, it um, cuts the mids, 140, boosts the highs, give uh, a little bit more... Um, uh, sparkly at the end so this is all made automated because that's again that's one of the isotope uh, plugins that does that for you you have a master assistant here you click and you say what you want and then it just does it for you the imager again you see i pushed it a little bit to the right to the uh let's let's widen it a little bit because i love white sounds and then that's the limiter now here you have to be careful not to push it too hard um you do this to make sure that your sound sounds on an even level with other sounds on other platforms like SoundCloud, like uh, like any any like YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and that's why you use a that's one of the, one of the reasons why you would use a, a mastering plugin like like this. Then I have Ulean loudness meter. What it, what it helps you see is where is it in terms of loudness, and is it too loud? Is it is it not loud enough? And that's a nice little plugin that tells you. What are you compared to other? Um, you, the nice thing you can do here, you can, what you should do when you're mastering is take a reference track, put it in your mix, see how, what it does in terms of loudness, and then try to copy it, emulate it. A lot of people do that when they're mastering. Uh, artists will say, you know, I want a mix that sounds like, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers or uh, Enya. And then the mastering engineer would take a reference study how it looks how it sounds like why it sounds like that and try to emulate it i do it because i'm lazy but yeah and then here this is actually only a correction for my headsets because i can see i'm mixing on headsets because my speakers are shot uh, and i don't want to put any money into them because speakers monitors can be really expensive so that's the whole chain really i mean that's how i i mixed the, the song um so if you have questions, why I did certain things, et cetera, et cetera, please feel free to, uh, to ask. So yeah, that's it. That's, that's I think, everything, everything I've got to say on, on I Am Alive. Um, next up, I'm not sure. I have a few new plugins, new toys that I could show you, including Scalar, which is just awesome. Um, I'll show you that one. And I think I'm going to um, yeah, probably either revisit those uh, older songs or maybe create something. I have something in the works, but we'll have to see. See you next time. Bye.